Hi, this is Gwen. I am talking about Lyme disease today. Lyme disease is something that affects very many people and a lot of people are affected and don't even know it. But Lyme disease to me is mishandled even in natural medicine many times. And the reason is I get a lot of people contact me and they've been battling Lyme, malaria, you know, all of these are protozoa infections. So whether it's Quintana Roo, trench fever, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, um, tick fever, Lyme disease, they're really all talking about the same thing. It just is named different things depending on what part of the world that you live in. But what I see is the biggest problem with dealing with Lyme disease is that your body is like a terrarium. It's either habitable for Lyme disease or it's not habitable habitable for Lyme disease. And a lot of times people have taken many products and spent a ton of money on different protocols, but what, what no one did was fix their terrain. So your body is either like a latrine inside and parasites and Lyme, protozoa, amoeba like to come in there and they, you might have an initial exposure and then they stay and then they go because the terrain's wrong. So if you're not cold and you're not acidic, they don't like that. They just leave and they'll go find another host. But if you have exposure and you're cold, like you have low thyroid issues, your body temperature's low or you're too acidic, guess what? They like you and they stay and it's hard to get rid of them. So you could be doing Lyme protocols like for the rest of your life and not get results. It also explains why one person in a family, like two people will go on a trip, let's say to Costa Rica or to Jamaica or wherever, and one of them comes back with an infection, usually the woman, and the guy doesn't. And it's because women have way more low thyroid symptoms than men. And it, I, there's a lot of reasons why that is, mostly because of other hormones. But also, if the person's acidic and have low oral temperature, so if someone's acidity level is under 6.5, testing urine pH, and if their oral temperature is under 98 degrees regularly, then it's gonna be hard to ever get rid of any infection because every time you have exposure, a parasite from you know, undercooked pork or steak or fish, um, I talked to someone who fished a lot and they told me that they had never caught a fish that didn't have worms in it. You know, if, if fish is frozen, it should take care of that. I mean, it's kind of gross, but if someone likes rare, medium rare steaks, if someone, I mean, you're in a restaurant, you know, there's cooked meat cut where raw meat has been, you know, so just even if you go to well cooked doesn't mean that the cleanliness and the sanitary part is happening. We all have exposure to parasites. If you've ever read um, Anne Louise's book, Guess What Came to Dinner? It's a super great book. I highly recommend it. And she, she puts out a number that over 80, I think it was 86% of people, especially in warm climates, have protozoa or parasite infections. So 86% is a huge number. Now, are they causing problems? Are they causing symptoms or not? It depends, but they can be the underlying cause of snoring, grinding your teeth, wanting to chew on ice, stomach issues, gurgling, gassiness, bloatedness, weird stools, you know, headaches, um, skin issues, um, more than, before weight loss, weight gain. Um, one thing about parasites that is unique is they're most active around a full moon. So if you have symptoms that seem to be cyclical, like every 30 days or every, it seems like once a month, then you probably have a parasite issue. If you're grinding your teeth or like to chew eyes, you most likely have a parasite issue. Snoring can be a parasite issue with whipworms and things in the in the nasal pattern. It can be other things like food allergies and stuff like that too. But um, it's important to get really to the bottom of it. So the first thing I would do with a client is is work a, focus on the terrain, and then the second thing after the terrain is resolved, then go into the specific type of parasite products. There's lots of herbs like wormwood and cloves and a product called Rascal. Also the homeopathics of Cena, Felix Moss are very good um, you know, for specific types of worms. There's also homeopathics for Giardia, Amoeba, and Protozoa. Some of my favorite products are Hannah's Protozoa Kit. I use this a lot with Lyme disease cases. 
and I like the ionic silver. I've also used Himalayan salt. One thing that I want to say about herbal concoctions for parasites is anything herbal or strictly nutritional is isolated to the gut. These things do not get to the brain, the blood brain, across the blood brain barrier. They don't deal with spinal fluid parasites. They don't deal with parasites that cause bone spurs or that are in the feet or the hands or the joints. So you almost have to go to like a ionic or molecular silver or a homeopathic product to get to all the body parts because parasites can be in the liver, like liver flukes, pancreatic flukes, whipworm, like the nasal passages, um, protozoa or toxoplasmosis or trichinosis. Trichinosis likes the muscles. They get into the muscles and start burrowing, which will cause like a, a fibromyalgia type pain, but in a more muscular uh, part that feels like a very uh, much a tightness. So depending on the parasite someone has is the approach is just a little bit different. The other thing I want to say about testing, because I hear this all the time, like I get so tired of hearing this that it makes me a little crazy, is that people will sometimes find a doctor that will listen to them. And a lot of times people know they have parasites. They'll come and say, I think I have parasites. And it depends, but they may not know which one or how to handle it. But what happens sometimes is people will come in and they'll say, well, I thought I had parasites, but the doctor says I don't. And I'll say, well, how does the doctor know? And they'll say, well, because I had lab work done and I'll look at the lab work and they tested for, let's say a scarus roundworm, which is a, is a popular parasite. It's the one that affects a lot of, well, pinworms especially affect a lot of kids. But if they don't test for roundworm, if they don't test for trichinosis or toxoplasmosis or flukes, then they're gonna tell you you don't have parasites. But what they actually told you is you don't have this one parasite out of a few hundred possibilities. If they didn't check for amoeba, they cannot tell you if you have amoeba. If they don't check for protozoa, they cannot tell you if you have protozoa. So when they're checking for a particular species, that's literally what they know, is you don't have that species. And with literally hundreds of species, that's what I would call a false negative. The other thing is, I had a lot of clients for a period of time that were getting some tests done um, for to fever and Lyme disease specifically. And they would come in and they would have all the classic symptoms. There's actually a great website called canlyme.org. It's C-A-N like Nancy, L-Y-M like Mary, E.org. So can it, like canadianlyme.org, but it's called canlyme.org. They have a decent um, symptom checklist on their website. But I was having a lot of people come in and they had had pretty extensive testing for Lyme disease until they didn't have it. And I called, um, I think it was Rocky Mountain Labs, and I called them and I said, hey, can you tell me um, you know, the accuracy of your test and, and give me some information on why people might get a false negative? And they were like, sure. First of all, if the Lyme is in the brain, the spinal fluid or the joints, it will not show up on just about any medical testing unless they do a spinal tap. Most doctors and even parasitologists will not do that. Um, secondly, if it's, if it's trichinosis and it's burning in the muscles, there's no test that's going to pick that up. So a lot of times it depends on where, how long you've had the parasite infection and where it's migrated into the body and where it's lodged itself. If someone has liver flukes or pancreatic flukes, you're not going to find that on a test that a doctor is going to run in your local town. I can pretty much promise you. So that lab told me that, you know, probably it's about 20% accurate on Lyme disease testing because of what's being tested. If they're doing a blood draw, it's the parasite has to be in the blood. If they're doing a urine sample, then the, the parasite or the die-off has to be in the, the stool sample. But that wouldn't happen if they're like in certain body parts. And a urine test, the exact same thing. So it depends on where they're residing in the body and how long you've had an infection. One thing I can say for sure is if you've been on a trip to the Caribbean, India, certain countries, and you started having gastric issues, you know, during the trip or shortly after you got back, you probably have a friend that you brought home with you. And so you can kind of go by the symptoms, but a lot of doctors don't ask, did you just go to a foreign country? Did you just travel? But we have plenty of parasites right here in the United States, especially in the warm climates, like Texas where I'm at, Florida, New Mexico, Arizona, you know, you just go outside and see how many bugs there are. 
A lot of those bugs like mosquitoes carry parasites, so you get bit, there's possible parasites, but they're everywhere. You know, they're coming from our dogs, they're coming from our cats, they're coming from litter boxes. You know, we just are bombarded by parasites as we're bombarded by bugs. So just kind of keep that in mind. If you want more information about uh, parasites, my information is below. And parasites is one of the particular things that pretty much needs a private consultation because it's not a cookie cutter approach. You can try like the silver first to see if it addresses your symptoms. You can take your pH and your temperature and, and start there. But that is one of the few times I would say that a, a private appointment is probably gonna save you a lot of time and frustration. All right, like and subscribe. Thanks for listening.